Good afternoon, Smyrna people, students and family members. My name is Douglas Wood. I am a lifetime resident of Delaware, and um, I did not grow up a farmer. Um, I've actually worked for a family business for years in insurance, and then became a teacher for um, 11, 12 years. And um, then I had a, an aha moment or a life-changing moment and have decided to start a, uh, a new business. And this business is um, called Aquaponics. And what Aquaponics is, is the raising of fish and using a technique called hydroponics. Um, then that makes a new word. This is all you language arts people. So we're taking two words, aquaculture and hydroponics, and squeezing them into a new word called aquaponics, which is fish, and hydroponics, which is growing without soil. Okay? So we're going to walk in one of our first biosecurity. It's kind of windy out here. Um, one of our first biosecurity rooms. All right, so this is kind of like the one room where you're contained and um, you will have to ring the doorbell or ring before you come in. And then typically you're greeted right here by one of us or one of my employees. Um, again, I have a combination that will get us in. Can't show you. All right, and we come into a second part of the greenhouse, which is what I would call our greeting room. Some of you saw this the other day. Um, that's our school store where we'll be selling things. Um, and uh, some of our products, honey, um, lettuces, there'll be uh, some vegetables here. Um, this room is typically what we thought to, to use it for is when we start to doing tours and things like that. Um, this is where you would come in. These are our, our church pews. There we go. There's a good thing of the church pews and the metal fish up there. Um, I think they came out of Fruitland, Maryland, out of a church. Um, I got, oh, gosh, Easton, over in Easton, Maryland. Some antique lady. And uh, I converted them into our, our benches for our, our room where we'll talk to students and adults about tours of the greenhouse or when they come into the store and buy lettuce and other things. So first thing that we'll do long before Corona came around um, is practice our, our number one thing is washing our hands. Um, main reason for washing your hands is wiping bacteria or germs off of your hands. And it's always good to wash your hands. Nowadays, I wash my hands so much, I don't have skin on my fingers. <laughs> I'm just kidding. A couple of paper towels, only one or two. They're hard to come by. Hi, Candace. Candace says hi. Hi, Candace. All right. So, again, now there is a actually a third door behind us. And, you know, of course we have a couple mats where we wanna wipe our feet as best as we can, getting bad um, microorganisms that are soil borne or other things that maybe you accidentally stepped in dog poop. And that's not good, you don't want it inside the greenhouse um, because warm-blooded animals, uh, sorry, I don't know what happened just there. Um, Warm-blooded animals carry a bacteria or um, known as a coli, um, which is, you know, you don't want to get on, on your produce. And in here, we take that very seriously because growing aquaponically, um, the, the re you reduce the risk of E. coli by growing inside and without um, fish or cold-blooded animals, so they do not carry the pathogen E. coli. So I, I hope I explained that. 
But the idea of washing your hands, wiping your feet, is to make sure that, that different types of, of bacterias don't come in. So I'm gonna wipe my feet on a, after I put the combination, let me in. Um, so I've wiped my feet, washed my hands. Oh, and I'm going to, uh, there's a mat. It's hard to be able to see it. There's Miss Bowen. She's cleaning some poop, some fish poop. Somewhere in here, there's this kid from Smyrna High School. His name is Will McGinnis. Oh, he's running. Look at him. He's hiding. He's hiding. Run, Will. <laughs> That's Will McGinnis, otherwise known as Cowboy Will. I taught him in fifth grade. So, sorry. Let's see if I can do this. Somewhere here, there's a mat. I wish I could flip this camera around. So, mom, upside down. Sorry, I was trying to show you this mat, but it's a mat that has a a aquaponics safe solution, much like bleach. Miss Bowen will have to remind me the name of it again. Vercon, Vercon. It's called Vercon. But it's Vercon Aqua Culture Vercon, and it's safe for fish. And you don't want to pour it in a fish tank. That would be kind of crazy. So this greenhouse is devised in the three bays, okay? So think of it, but they're all open to each other. So I have three bays in the greenhouse. Two of them are identical. We might get Will here. Watch this. I'm going to sneak him. He's trying to run. Look, look. There he is. Will, Will, come on, William. All right. Jana McGowan, what's up, girl? Um, so there are three different, different greenhouses here, okay, but all one big one. So this particular room, I'm just gonna show you this real quick, is where we grow different types of um, other products like uh, basil, um, uh, kale, Swiss chard, okay? So this behind me is a system that I'm working on now, trying to finish it up and get it going, um, getting the water in, in flowing so that we can start having um, the nutrition build up in it. Let's see behind me. Behind me is the are the two beds that we haven't, um, we really haven't fired this system up. So, let me see here, let me see if I can turn it around again. Like I said, this system I've been building, uh, I don't know, most of the last two or three months or more. All right, let me see something. Oh, snap, I just figured it out, guys. You know, I have a master's degree and it just took me that long to figure it out. There we go. All right, much, much better. So this is the system that I've been building. If you look, you'll see some wires. Ryan Huffert, another Smyrna boy, and his wife who teaches at the middle school is my electrician. So we're just gonna, someday we'll get this all hooked up. Right now I've been filling it up to make sure to make sure that there's no leaks. So, you know, you don't want this water staying around here too long because it will start getting nasty. I know, I know Bobby, I, I, I don't have a fancy tractor that drives itself. <laughs> I can't wait to see yours next week. All right, so I'm gonna take you over to the system that has been running since, it has been running nonstop since, gosh, what would we say? Would have to be June, July. So June, July, I turned this system on. And it is, this is the system that has, I'm gonna wipe my lens guys here in a second. This system is fully loaded and um, meaning that it has six tanks, 
Okay, this is where we're gonna get into some math. Maybe, maybe um, I'll, I'll give a t-shirt away if someone gets this correct. Okay, so I have two identical systems. So let's just remember that. I have two growing systems and each one of them is physically separated. It does not exchange water. And there's a reason why it's for um, protocol safety. If I were to ever to lose a system per se, um, I would have the second one as a backup. God forbid something happened to my fish. Um, you know, it, 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 could be, it could be devastating to your business. You've just lost all kinds of money because it's taken me almost six months just to get the, the, the nutritional value of this water correct so that we could grow fish. So I'm gonna zoom in on the number one operator in this um, greenhouse. These are fish. These particular fish are what they call tilapia. They are indigenous or they are native to um, the Africa. Um, so, the, you can use other fish. Some of the other fish that are used um, originally back in the back in the way 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 back in the early times, the Chinese used carp. The Mayans and the Aztecs also used some aquaculture. Um, they used um, carp as well. You'll see that the fish get active when you come over to the tank. They think they're getting fed. So some of the noise that you're hearing is the automation in, in the greenhouse. The, I'm gonna flip back. Let's see if this technology works. There we go. So a lot of the technology in the greenhouse um, is very sophisticated. It has programs where it's basically um, operated off of temperature. So at a certain temperature, the, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna switch back. I'm gonna, this, now that I've figured it out, Okay, so if you look up and you'll see vents, these vents run 100 and uh, I think this house is 145 feet long, or is it 175 feet long? So it runs the whole length of the building. There are screens in there to keep bad bugs and all bugs out. Um, there are good bugs and bad bugs, but we don't really want any in here except for the good ones. And we introduce them on our own. I'll talk about that maybe later. Um, so let's take a look at a couple of the fish tanks. There are six fish tanks in this system. Okay. Each one has an average of 300 fish in them. Here's, as we go around, they're going to get bigger and bigger. Okay. There's a sticker on here that says fry, okay? And this one particularly came in on 12, 19 of 19. And this is, I said the other day, this is Mrs. Wood's funny joke. And then there's fried, like you're gonna eat. And that's on 9, 19 of 20. So the fish that we have are here for a total of nine months and then they too will be sold um, to market to eat I will not process them we put them on ice and we take them to a to a warehouse and and hopefully sell them that way um, I'm gonna show you all the fish tanks real quick and then I'm gonna show you uh, I'm gonna try to show you the, the, the way that the system runs um, from start to finish see if I can explain it explain it um oh lisa yui yeah but you're only i didn't tell you how many fish tanks are in this building yet all right these are the next big ones these are our second largest my guess is there we haven't weighed these guys in a little while and that might be the surprise at the end here i'm going to show you how we we weigh and come up with the the mass um or the the, the average weight of these fish and that depend that tells us how we are um how we're um how we're feeding how much how many grams of fish food we're feeding look look i'm gonna get cowboy will there he is over there i got him 
Okay, this is our largest fish. We received these August 30th. I'll never forget that day. It was the first time we ever received fish. We got them in the mail. They were FedEx to us in a UPS, or not a UPS, a Home Depot box. Um, these fish are probably close to two and a half pounds. And then we're going to eat them. We're gonna have a fish fry when all this COVID is over. And um, we're gonna eat these first group of fish, all of my friends, all six of them. And we'll eat them on um, 531.20. Let me see. I'm gonna try to do this without dropping my phone. I, oh, there we go. So, interesting. I'm gonna take you back to the back of the greenhouse now and we'll walk by these plants. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, guys. I gotta talk to you about the poop. So, the main ingenious thing, the main ingenious thing to this whole process is that I can't use chemicals or pesticides. Um, and as, as you may know or not know, chemicals and pesticides, there's lots of debate. Um, you know, they potentially could be harmful to you. Um, I'll bring the chicken. Yeah, I just got a whole bunch today. Um, so the fish live in these tanks. Bobby Joe, don't get me distracted. So the fish live in these big tanks for six months, okay? So they're in these big tanks, 800 gallons for six months at a stocking density of almost 300, okay? So their waste, poop and pee, leaves the fish tank through a drain pipe in the middle, okay? Solids typically are heavier and they go to the bottom and this is called a stand pipe and there's holes at the bottom where it allows the poop to go the solids so these solids go to what's there's miss bowen she's washing one let's go over and watch her real quick so the each there's two fish tanks per one clarifier oh there's will again so this is where the solids the heavier solids get washed out we'll we'll wash these tanks out every third day or and then, so it smells good right now. So. Poop, fish poop. Fish poop. So the fish poop, the fish poop is what generates our system. And as I alluded to earlier, fish cannot carry the bacteria E. coli. Now maybe some science person out there like in super, super, Never Neverland would tell me I was lying to you. But that's what I've been told. That's everything that I've read. So as, as far as I know, it's, it's, uh, it's as true as I know. So this poop goes to a machine or a filter. I say, I call it the milkshake maker. So we wash maybe a hundred gallons out and send it to this. Sorry guys, I'm moving a ladder to this machine. It's called the Z-Dep. What it does, all the water comes to this big tank and this big tank. So we're sending almost probably 100 to 200 gallons of water that has poop in it. And it runs through this system for, for 12 hours about. And this machine right here filters out and pulverizes the poop, okay? And then later on, I'll take you over to where that water goes. But then, rather than flush, you know, like when you flush a toilet, you're flushing all that water and all that waste down. Well, we want to send the waste to one place, kind of like if you have a septic, okay? But we want that water back. That water is very valuable. This water is very nutrient rich. And that's what we want. We want nutrient-rich water, okay?
So that water gets pumped back to the fish tank system. I'm sorry if I'm all over the place, guys. Here's Cowboy Will again. We got Will. So the clean water from that filtration system comes back here from this pipe and gets reintroduced into the system, okay? All right, here's another part. So we go from the, the poopy clarifiers. This one's pretty clean. Miss Bowen must have got this yesterday. This is the one she's working on, okay? Oh, is, I, is that one really poopy? I'm gonna take you around. Lift, oh yeah, you guys wanna see something crazy? Hold on. Let me show them what the, poop, the poopy clarifier looks like. So, I'm not sticking my phone in this. If you guys are crazy, you think I'm doing that. There's some fish poop. See that? That's the fish poop. That's what basically we're, we're clarifying. That's why it's called a clarifier. And basically, you guys should know that heavier things um, sink to the bottom, right? I don't, I don't know. I have a hard time sinking in the pool. What's up, Faith Drabinsky? Look, so this is connected to the fish tank. Like I said, there's two fish tanks to each clarifier. So we've turned them off. Watch when I open this and watch all the poop that comes out. Usually a, a big one comes out. But that's what we're filtering out, okay? So all of you people that have said, does the poop touch my plant? No, no, the poop never really leaves this area. I was hoping a big one would come out. Try the other one, Miss Bowen. These guys are nasty. We feed them so much um, that the fertilizer, this is what we want. Gosh, oh, there's a, there's a good one. So anyway, this is, you know, the first part. I hope you guys don't get dizzy. This is the first part of the filtration. Then it goes to what they call a mineralization tank. This is where I always need Miss Bowen's help to explain it. But it's basically filled with, with nets. I know it looks nasty. Okay, these nets, filled with nets. And this is where positive bacteria um, grows. We actually want the bacteria to grow in here. And it, this is where, oh God, here we go, nitrates, nitrites. So this is where the nitrification happens. So the ammonia and the nitrate and the nitrites coming from the fish, um, all that comes into this tank. And this is where it changes chemically. And we call it, this is where the nitrification happens, which is really what the plants want, nitrogen. So this is um, what we call the bioreactor. And these things are plastic, is our plastic media, okay? If you kind of see, um, things are growing on them. Let me see if I can, there's, I mean, I'm gonna put this down and then grab one. So, I call these the macaroni. Hold on, everything is opposite. There's my finger that I cut off, the tip of it. Look at that, that was good. Never stick your fingers in holes where they don't belong. My backhoe, cut it off. All right, so, all of these things, these little micro macaronis, have positive bacteria on them. And again, that's what breaks down that's what breaks down um, the waste and then when we get to here there's some more filtering bags and this is the the, the best water in the house it's the most nutrient rich water that we have it goes down out pipes everything's done by gravity at this point and it comes out into a growing bed this is or they call this deep deep water aquaculture okay and if you remember over here, this one's not complete yet. 
This is what it looks like empty. And the water's clean. Not that that water's not clean. Don't get that in your head. Clear. Okay, this water is nice and clear. Okay. So this is a bed that we have been growing in. Uh, well, we've had product coming out the last four weeks. So I'm going to take you down real quick, down to the to the um, to the nursery where we start our fish. Oh, Delaware, it's our state flag. Okay, I'm going to put my sunglasses on. So the next time you, you see me. So when I talk about aquaculture and hydroponics, this is hydroponics back here. We are growing in a soilless method, okay? But we're doing it, there are two different ways you can do hydroponics. Hydroponics can be done with a synthetic fertilizer or a liquid fertilizer. Still a good way to grow, okay? But we are not using any chemicals, any fertilizers, or anything like that. Our fish poop or our fish waste turns into a fertilizer through that nitrification, okay? So I'm gonna run through some math here. We have a thousand plant holes back here, okay? A thousand. So at any given time, we would have over a thousand plants sitting back here, okay? Right now, we've slowed down our system a little bit. Initially, when things were going well, the first couple weeks, we were producing about um, just under 300 plants a day. Um, and since restaurants and schools have kind of closed, uh, we've slowed it down to about half. So we're producing about 150 and we're doing direct sales where I've been um, meeting people at state parks and pre-order online. It's been, it's picked up and it's just been a way that I try to keep moving forward. I could have sat around and cried and I mean, I had those days, don't get me wrong. Um, but you got to put one foot in front of the other and keep going. That's, that's what, that's what running a business is about. Making sure your poise are taken care of and just, you got to keep, got to keep pushing forward. True of anything in life. If you want to try to be successful, it's not easy. It's, it hasn't been easy. It's been tough. Um, but I wake up every day and put one foot in front of the other. It's the best. It's the only thing I can do. So this is the nursery. We plant our, our seeds in a material that's called um, rock wool. If you push down on it, it's kind of spongy. And um, this is where we start. So they spend 10 days in the seed tray. Okay. And then we take them out and we transplant them into the, this system, which is called an NFT, which stands for I'm pretty sure it's nutrient film technology. I think the T is right. But basically, we're sending water down this tray. If you look right here. I just moved it up there. It's kind of hard. Anyway, we're sending a very small amount of water down this tray. Let me see if I can pull this one out. And boom. Ah, why is it opposite? So there's your root, there's your, your growing plug. Come on, Doug. There's your growing plug. And if you, gosh, you squeeze it, you squeeze it, there's a lot of water that comes out. I'm gonna put it back in the tray to grow, okay? They spend 10 to 12 days in this system and then they have to spend 18 days in this floating system where they, they suck up that nutrient-rich water and grow. And if you kind of look from start to finish, it's a big wave. So the plants, these are plants we planted today. And if you want to count, two trays equals a day, okay? So the, the two trays of a row that's one day. So two, two, there's another day. Here's another day. All the way up for 18 days. So as you see, the plants are getting bigger 
and bigger. And by the time they get down to the end, they're ready to harvest. Now, if you notice, okay, I'm skipping a row. So a day you're supposed to plant, um, when we were, like I said, when we were planting, we were planting all of these um, trays. So all these trays would have been full, uh, but we've cut production in half. So um, originally, we here's another math problem, Lisa, you, are you ready? You ready? So when we were running this system in its full, in, in, in its full capacity, there were four products coming out of here times 72. Okay, 72 times four different products. Um, what was it? I came up with the math earlier. I think it was 388. So 388 or 288 plants a day. So like I said, we've we've cut back because of the times. Um, with like I said, my original market marketing idea was schools and um, schools and um, restaurants and other other you know type of commercial places so i'm gonna miss bowen's looking at me and telling me i need to to get okay i'm gonna show him the, the growing bedroom and then we'll we'll do that huh no is it not working it's a weird noise is my sound not working guys haha <laughs> mass skills right now so i'm gonna show you the last room because this room, like I said, is an identical system of what I just showed you. Okay? There's a shade cloth to help. help. That's better. Okay. Is a shade cloth. Oh, you know why? Because it's wet. Sorry. Um, to keep me a little cooler when I'm harvesting. But remember, there's two um, systems here. So here you go, Lisa Yui, another, another math. So with two systems um, in full capacity, at 300 plants a day it's not a real hard math problem but your kids are younger um we would be producing close to 600 plants a day okay so remember where i showed you the the milkshake machine that um basically makes a milkshake out of the leftover poop so we don't waste that either this is a zero uh uh, a zero emission, uh, not a zero emission. Good God, the electric bill. Um, we don't. We don't. There's nothing that we push out into the, to the. Um, you know, there's no. Um, God, what's the word I'm looking for? There's no waste. We're using all of our water. So this is a um, what we call a sump. So that milkshake machine um, comes down here. Better sound. I know. I think it's because I dropped my phone in the water. Um, um, the, uh, the, the, the poopy water comes down here to the sump and then we send it into these what we call living beds okay so these are living beds and we have different plants uh, what I call more of a stemmy a stemmy product like kale we've tried um, because of Kristen Callet. Um, works in the child nutrition office. We're trying uh, of Smyrna. We're trying celery. She basically bet me to grow it, and I just said, "Fine, I'll do it, girl." That's the kind of guy I am. Um, so there's kale, celery. Um, here's a banana tree with some new baby offsprings. Um, Swiss chards. Our broccoli. Hey, was not successful. You know, part of gardening, guys, is getting it out there and do it. Everybody can uh, say they can, but until you do, it's it's the it's for real. So if I don't fall in the sump here, hold on. So I'm gonna try to go in and show you um, something. I could make really bad comments here, but I'll try not to because my wife told me to be good. Okay, I have to go go. All right, these are what they call hydrogen balls, and they have little holes in them. And that's where positive bacteria grows and breaks down um, the waste. And these plants will eat it up a little bit more. Okay, so because I have to deliver to, are we gonna come over? Okay. Okay, so I'm supposed to tease you guys. 
Um, we were going to try to show some fish being weighed today. We were going to try to show some fish being weighed today. Um, but we're running out of time because I have to go to Smyrna for a drop. Um, maybe we'll do that another time. Um, but let me just show you that real quick. And then I'm going to show you my refrigerator because it's cold. Let me show you this real quick. So this is really what got me um, hooked into the, uh, into the Nelson and Page system. I was going to buy this. It was little. It's a little system. Um, and I was going to put it up at my hobby greenhouse. Um, but then I just decided to go crazy and go big. But let me show you something real quick. I'm going to cut through my office. Look, we could bother Miss Wood. Let me see. I forgot my combo. It's tough getting old. Look, I'm cutting through. Say hi to Boomer. Hey, Boomer. He's rough life. Hashtag bulldog problems. Woo, there's Miss Wood. All right, I'm going to take you out here real quick, and then I've got to jump in my delivery van and uh, get on my way to Smyrna. So... Oh, this, we might have a problem back here. So this is my refrigerator. Those were the, the deliveries that I got to get out today. And let's see if I can go through here and show you the delivery van. They should be in it. It's unlocked. It's locked. Um, in the Ford, in the Ford cup holder. Sorry, they're asking me where the key is for the lock on the door. And, uh, oh, here's Will again. Shh, shh. William McGinnis, class of 2020, right there. <laughs> oh, I love Will. He was a tear back in fifth grade. Him and Tony and Ariel. Gosh, they beat me up all the time. But this is, uh, this is our van. It gets sanitized every every time. We wipe it down. Uh, the refrigerated van part and the cab part. Um, but I want to thank you. I want to thank you for uh, inviting me for the uh, virtual field trip. It's been a pleasure. I like sharing, you know, my business. Um, let's just uh, all pray that we get back on a normal routine soon. All right. Hang loose, Smyrna. Thank you very much.